up. Anchor's up. Oh, Rose, well, we're off at last. Well, I'm delighted. We've waited so long for this day. So is the lunch. All right. With the raising to the masthead of the United States Naval Reserve Yacht Pennant, flown for the first time around the world, Alva gets underway, bound for the open Atlantic and a quick run down the coast. The house flag breaks before a friendly wind, and fair weather accompanies us on most of our journey southward. At the bow of Alva swims a school of porpoise, escorting us like a reception committee from the domain of old Neptune himself. But the porpoise deserted us at the first indication of the heavy seas that we encountered just before reaching Panama. The mighty locks of the Panama Canal raise us overland across the isthmus to a height of 82 feet, dropping us again to sea level on the Pacific side. Once out of the canal, our real adventures will begin. We have 56 persons on board, of which 51 compose the crew, and fuel oil for 16,000 miles. Our diesel engines, resting now while electric mules tow us, are capable of developing 5,000 horsepower, giving us a cruising speed of 15 knots. The Alva is 265 feet long, 46 foot beam, and of 19 foot draft. On our second day out, I took a bearing on Mapello Island, the first land sighted. Take time, no log. This island is a mass of sheer rock rising from the sea, a danger to navigation and a spot usually avoided by steamers. In view of this, we fire a gun so that if anyone be cast away on its desolate shores, he might hear and give a signal of distress. Nearing the Galapagos now, and on the north shores of Albemarle Island, we pass an awesome spectacle, a volcano which has reached the sea, lava flowing down the mountainside with perhaps a surface temperature of more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, plunges into the water with a roaring and hissing that drowns out all other sounds. We are fascinated, but do not venture too close. Approaching Narborough Island, our 
shortwave radio was in constant use. Being one of the most powerful sets at sea, we were able to keep in touch with my office in New York from any part of the world. Thanks to the radio, we published a daily newspaper, keeping us informed of the march of events. And land. All looks fine. Well, it won't be long before we'll be in the harbor now. Yeah, I know it here. And now we are about to land in picturesque Polynesia, Tuahini Island, a beauty spot among the society group. Midships. Try to fire fire the chair in the water, sir. Stand by. Stand by, sir. Stand by. Let go. Let go, sir. Let go. adorned with lays, and whether you feel a bit foolish or not, you must wear them, for to decline would be a gross discourtesy. 